Hey folks, Quilly Teen here, and welcome to an addendum video to our callbacks and event tutorial that uh, we posted yesterday for Unity. Um, and a few people had suggested a, a way to make the event system a little simpler, actually, by removing the centralized event system management class. So in, in our event callback example, we had a centralized event system manager that um, people sort of registered events against and then would, would also use this to fire off the events as they would go. But a few people, and in particular I want to do a shout out to Pavels Danoff and Fuzzy Hobo, who sent in specific examples of their solution to this, that uh, uh, came up with a way to remove the centralized event class. And actually, after having gone through all the trouble of making the sort of um, event info abstract class sort of a lot cooler and slicker by the end of the video, it's the sort of thing that in hindsight I'm like, uh, the doy, yeah, that's of course a great way to go. So I didn't want to, um, uh, Fuzzy Hobo even sent in a, a proper sort of like a, a pull request on GitHub and he's got his own fork and stuff like that. I didn't want to pull those changes into the uh, repo that I was using for the tutorial because um, then it, the it was, you, you download the code for the tutorial and it wouldn't make any sense anymore. But what I wanted to do is talk about it uh, over here and link to Fuzzy Hobo's um, um, repository. And again, shout out to Pavlos Danov who also sent in a solution, although he just sent in as a just sort of a Google Drive file over here. So um, if we pull up this window over here, this is Fuzzy Hobo's repository over here. And there are three files to look at. I mean, one file that really does the work. And then we'll also look at our death listener and the, the health class over here just to see how that gets utilized. So again, the event system has been completely removed. And the class that we, I, I would still probably call that something like event info. I mean, strictly speaking, I guess it is its own event and its own info now. So we have a abstract base class called event, which is a generic. So, um, you know, it gets templated with T and it forces this T to be something that is descended from the event class itself. Now, let's look at an example as, as the, at the final sort of base class over here. So we still have our unit death event over here which is descended from or inherits from the base event class uh, with the generic template filled out, filled out for unit death event. We're going to see in a second why this is important to actually still have the uh, the template code in here, the generic code in here. So unit death event is basically the same as we had before, right? We've got a game object that is like the thing that died and then room for extra info about the death. And another example here would be our debug event here. Uh, where we had like the idea of maybe we have some sort of verbosity level and then somewhere in we have a debugger that registers itself for these debug events, that sort of thing in there, okay? So these are the the ones that we'll actually use and that's pretty samey to before. So what is the change? Well, the change is that this base class here still has this, this you know, description string ready to go, um, but then it's got this. We've got our delegate here for the event listener. Uh, this is the class or the function that is going to be actually called whenever the event gets fired. Okay, that's the same as before. And then within this info, and again, there's no centralized event systems class anymore. Within this event base class, here's where we have the list of, of listeners. I would actually, I'd probably call this listeners over here. Um, because this is the list of functions that are waiting for it. And you can see here, you can register the listener, right? You take a listener, you add it to your list of listeners. Again, I would probably rename this to that. So, you, and then you can unregister this. And then finally, when fire event gets called, assuming your list of listeners is not null, then we call all the listener functions over here. Um, and everything will work out nicely. You know, that, that sort of last 20 minutes of yesterday's video, where I was sort of working out the best way to, like, how do I get the type conversion to work the way I want? You know, again, here, it's all working. It's very clean, very neat. Now, there's one little thing in here that um, I don't know if I realized worked this way, right? So this event class has a static. Now, this static, a static sort of field on a class is not a per instance thing. Each event that you instantiate, that you create, won't have its own events, um, I don't know, array over here. It's the, the event keyword here basically makes this into an array or a list or whatever, right? Each individual event that you instantiate won't have its own array, but this static class, this static won't actually be called or shared between all instances of event by itself. And I don't know, again, the, the um, um, uh, generic system in C-sharp is still something I don't have a ton of experience with. So I initially, when I saw this, I'm like, wait, won't all these events, all these listeners be shared by all of the event um, instances, 
Right, so if I make a unit death event and I make a debug event, won't they both have the same set of listeners? And it turns out that no, when you've got a generic class like this that um, requires that you define, you know, some some T over here in this case, some, some class that's going to be T, when you do that, the static is only shared within, say, so when you instantiate, let's say um, over here, this is our health event over here where we fire the event. And you can look at it here. The firing of the event is basically the same as before. You create... You, you create this object, which is basically our unit death event info. You populate it with the unit death event info. But in addition to that, the event, this um, object itself is what's responsible for firing it. So when you create this, as opposed to creating a, say a debug event, they have two completely separate sets of this events uh, or listeners array. Uh, they're not shared. Now the downside to this is that I don't know if there's any way to have all of the events, regardless of subtype, if there's any way to have all of the events share one static set of data. Because what would be nice about that is it would allow a centralized way for the different event listeners and managers to still communicate with each other, right? One of the things about having a centralized event system manager is that there is one centralized place that can have some control over all the events that your your application might fire. This might be useful for debugging. There might be certain implications for how certain multi-threaded things can be handled and so on and so forth. And it might be nice to have them all communicate with one another. Now, it's not impossible to do that. There's no reason that in here, we couldn't have a completely separate public, probably just static class, public static class, just called event manager. Um, and honestly, even the level of, of publicness, I, I don't know if we need, but it'll just, it would just give an option for the events to have some authority that they could, you know, then communicate with just for the purpose of sort of pausing, unpausing, dealing with, you know, any kind of threading locks or something like that. So they can still talk to a central authority, but it would have to be a separate static class altogether, not just a static property or field over here. Uh, because these are not shared when you have different, you know, different T's. Each event with a different T has a completely different set of static stuff, which I don't think I knew, but is really important to know. Anyway, so the way it's actually applied, where you can see it here, right? I'm creating a new death event, I'm filling out the death event, and then I'm firing this death event over here. And an example of a listener over here in our death listener, it just registers itself directly with unit death event. So unit death event, I want to register myself to listen to that. When I get destroyed, I'm going to unregister myself from listening to that. And then here's the on unit died, which gets, you know, called over here. So it is kind of interesting that the, um, that the one object, the one unit death event object is both the event firer as well as the event data itself. Now, one interesting question is like, there's nothing stopping us in this on unit died from doing something like unit death dot fire event a second time. Now that would lead to, you know, kind of an infinite loop and badness and things. It's probably fine. Cause it's probably not the sort of thing you do, but I wonder like, should you have a Boolean in here to, um, to say something like already fired. So you don't fire the same event twice. Uh, just in case someone, you know, types in something really dumb. Because the problem with infinite loops, and then it hangs your whole um, Unity editor, and it's a little bit more annoying to to debug those things. Although it's it's pr it's fairly easy to catch if you do attach to the debugger and then just tell to like pause there and see where in the code we are. But it, I don't know if that's worthwhile at all. I mean, we add the overhead of an extra boolean to keep track of and an extra check. It becomes slightly less optimal. Not that I think it adds a lot of overhead, but. I just wonder if that's a thing. It's also worth noting, um, I'd actually, I, I'm assuming this still works with this setup. You probably could make this a public event. Um, and then things like the death listener here, instead of using registered listener and unregistered listener, could do something like unit death event dot, again, events, or I would probably rename it to listeners, unit death event dot listeners plus equal on unit die and minus equal on unit die. There could be something that, that doesn't work the, quite the same with this setup, but I bet you that would work. Now, is that ideal or not? The advantage of the register listener, while it's a little bit more cumbersome to actually write the entire function um, and, and to call it this way instead of just doing the plus equal, the advantage is you can have other code in here, right? So that you can, you know, debug info and, I don't know, permission info or some damn thing kind of info in here uh, to see how it goes. Uh, maybe check for duplications or I, I don't know what, but there's still something to say. In the end, the, the total effect makes is about the same whether you use the function 
or just use the plus equal over there. So I might leave it there. But yeah, so again, shout out to both uh, to Pavel and to uh, Fuzzy Hobo over here. And again, I'll be linking to his repository down below uh, so that you can take a look at the things. I, I really quite keen on this. Um, and I think it absolutely is the, the right solution for uh, the next time I want to do something like this in my actual program. Thanks a lot, guys. See you next time.